and welcome to Kirchi Crochet Hooks. Please enjoy our free tutorials with just one of a 24 part series on teaching you how to crochet. Subscribe to start receiving our 24 courses that are delivered to your email inbox every few days. By the time you're done, you'll know the ins and outs of crochet. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So now let's get crocheting with Curtsy. Welcome everybody to lesson number two and this is the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. In today's program we're going to be learning the importance of gauge when it comes to matching your crochet hooks to a pattern or to the yarn that you're using. Also today I'm going to teach you how to slip knot and this is the very first knot in order to start crocheting. We're also going to review how to hold your hook and material once again and I'm going to get you to chain. And this is all coming up in lesson number two of the Curtsy Crochet Hook program. Understanding gauge is actually really simple. These are two identical patterns, but they're done with two different crochet hooks and two different kinds of material. So even though the pattern is identical and I followed everything to a T, they are very different. Over here I've used a six millimeter crochet hook that has created these circles, but by changing your hook up or down, it changes the property on the way that this looks. For example, this one here was done with the jumbo hook just like so, using five yarns at one time, where this is just one yarn at one time, using a standard 6.0 millimeter curtsy crochet hook. So it's just a matter of understanding that your patterns are actually completely transposable, and you can actually increase or decrease sizes by just changing your crochet hook. When it comes to your crochet hooks, you just have to look on the yarn ball or the actual pattern to determine what size you're going to use. That's actually pretty simple. But if you're like me and you just see something online that you want to kind of replicate, you need to match your hook to your actual yarn. For example, this here is Bernat Mosaic yarn, just like so, and this yarn is way too big for this hook, and I'm going to show you a demonstration in just a second on why it's too big. So if you're ever going to just play with different ideas that you're finding online, what you have to determine is that the hook and the yarn must complement each other, and if it's not, I'm going to tell you why in just a second. In working with the Bernat Mosaic, they're suggesting to use a 5 millimeter crochet hook, or a US size H or 8. And so here I'm just substituting and I'm using a two and a half millimeter crochet hook and you can see that the yarn is way too big for the actual hooking area and what happens is that it likes to slip so it's just barely grabbing onto it at this point and if you're working with different kinds of yarns the plies would actually be separating. As you can see it's really not wrapping around the material it's actually just kind of holding it but it can slip off very easily. So if we switch up to the hook that it's suggesting to the five it's actually going to make the world a difference and there's no question that it's going to grab the material as you go along. But if you're noticing now, when I go and switch up the hooks, the actual stitch, uh, stitch sizes will be much different and that is what they're referring to in the amount of gauge. I'm going to grab this 9mm curtsy bamboo hook and I'm going to jam it in and I'm just going to force it to be bigger. So you're going to notice that the actual sizing is different again. So we had the really small, we had a 5 here and now we're on a 9mm and I'm just going to chain as normal. So if you were doing something very airy and very lacy, this may be the way to go. But you can see that really the yarn is really quite spaced out. So if you were wanting to do a nice tight sweater, um, something that you can't see through, this would not be the yarn for you. However, you could really use some thick bulky yarn with this hook and you could get the same effect as if you would down here. So what I'm saying to you is that your hook should complement the project that you're working on in relevance to the yarn that you've chosen. When it comes to buying your yarn balls online, you actually do want to turn it over and you want to read a little information. For example, this is 100% acrylic, okay, so you don't have a lot of shrinkage to worry about. It's machine washable and dryable. And if we turn it even a little bit more, we can actually determine this barcode right here, which is really important. It's actually giving you all the information on washing instructions that are allowed, like no bleach, no ironing, and etc. etc. We want to look over here, and this ball here is considered a medium weight, so it's been classified as number four and most yarn balls now have this coating on it so you can actually figure it all out. We want to look across to the next one and it has the gauge size and the gauge is the amount of stitches per inch or per, or per set centimeters. Okay, So the gauge has been worked out to be 4 by 4 inches or 10 by 10 centimeters whichever your denomination that you're working in. If you're working with knitting needles it's telling you to use a 5 millimeter knitting needle or a US 8 Okay, and if you're working with crochet, it's telling you to use a 5 millimeter crochet hook or a USH8. So what it's telling you here is see this 18S 
and 24R, while well, 18S is 18 stitches. So in order to get the gauge of four, four inches across or 10 inches across, it's actually 18 stitches. And in order to get the four inches down and the 10 centimeters down, you have to go 24 rows. So this is actually determining how big you want to go. So when you're looking at patterns, there's going to actually be gauging when it comes to um, being labeled on a pattern and by just knowing how far you can go per inch just like so you can actually substitute your yarn for the project at any If I time. wanted to measure the gauge of this Catherine wheel stitch all I need to do is take out my measuring tape and measure four inches across. I also then want to now count the amount of stitches that exist in this four inch distance. I then want to then measure up four inches from the same area and determine how many rows it's actually going to take in order to do that. So it actually will give you the amount of stitches that you're getting in a horizontal as, mount, as well as the amount of rows that you're going to get going up and that will give you a really good indication what the gauge is just in case you want to substitute this particular pattern onto something else using different materials. In today's tutorial we're going to work with the Bernat Super Value and when I rotate it around you're going to notice that the instructions are actually identical to what I was showing earlier. So even though it's a different material in comparison to the Bernat Mosaic, the material is going to react the same because the gauging that they're calling for is exactly identical. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to create a slip knot. For creating the slip knot, I'm going to use a 5mm crochet hook as what it's calling for on the yarn ball, which is also a USH. To create your slip knot, what I want you to do is I want you to hold out your hand and I want you to point at somebody. So point at somebody just like so. I want you now then to open your hand back up and just put your three fingers down just like so. I want the pinky here to be trapping in this yarn here so that it can't move. So you, you got it slammed down. You can see the, the blood is leaving my hands. That's how tight it is. But it's just something that is just a lot easier. So keeping that tight, I want you to wrap it around your finger twice just like so, and I want you to use your index finger and your thumb to hold that. So it's tight down here, it's tight here, so there's tension here and tension here. Whenever I do tutorial, this is the back of my hand, this is the front of my hand. Back, front, okay? And when I'm talking about the yarn, this is the back, this is the front. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the back one and go up over the front one. This is now the new back one right here. This is the new front. I want you to take the new back one and slip it up over the top of your finger just like so. And you can let that go. And this here ladies and gentlemen is your slip knot. So grabbing your crochet hook just slip in like so and pull it snug. Whenever you're working with it you don't want to be reefing on it like you're tying down a boat to a dock. You just want to keep it nice and loose and that is your slip knot. Okay, let's review once again how to hold the yarn in your hand. Again, just pull it up like this, open up your pinky, and I want you to put the yarn over top of the three fingers. Okay, and you can slam this down shut if you want to. This is where your tension control is, as well as the tension will be right here as well. And what I want you to do is rotate your hand towards you, and with your index finger and your thumb, I want you to grab on the slip knot. Now chances are this here is not going to be as beautifully in your hand right now as it should be. So in order to do that, don't ever let that get so loose that it gets really sloppy. Just take this hand and just pull it backward. Okay, And using your pinky, you want to slam it down. So by opening up your hand, you allow tension, and by closing it, you create the tension. But sometimes there's too much looseness here and here, but you know you really can't pull backward all the time. So this finger here will go up and down when you're actually working with it because this will provide extra stretch and contraction when you need it. So here's the anatomy of an actual slip knot. You can see that I've taken the hook out and this diameter of this stitch here of the slip knot is actually going to match the diameter of the crochet hook. So if I had a bigger hook just like so, when I went to go jam it in, you're going to see that it's going to force more material to, in order to create the loop. So when I take it out, this will be a lot bigger. So when we're looking at the stitch sizes and what we're calling for, when I go to put in the smaller one again, you can see that it's very sloppy now. And so basically how crochet is working is that every stitch is actually matching the diameter of this area of the crochet hook. 
not down here, but up here. So it's very important that whenever you're actually crocheting that you actually keep moving the stuff down onto this part because this here is gauging and actually making every stitch the same size when you're working along. So this looks like a teardrop just like so but when we put it back upside right it's an upside down teardrop and I want you to think about that because this is the most key element when it comes to chaining and crocheting is that when you go to put in your crochet hook just like so that when you go to try to pull it out no matter which angles that you're at you can't pull it out in order to pull it out you actually have to turn it upside down in order to open up the teardrop because it's the teardrop space that is allowing this hook to slide through okay so if I go this way this way this way it doesn't matter the hook has to go upside down because then it's pulling right through the teardrop section and I can pull it right out so that's a key element and this is why this flat area is on the crochet hook because you know when it's starting to rotate in your hands exactly where it needs to be in order to pull it. So let's begin to chain. So pretend you're on a rowboat and you, this is your fixed area, okay? So it's like a rowboat. What I want you to do is rotate underneath like so, rotate the hook towards you, and what we want to do is we want to pull it so that the hook is facing down because when it's facing down it'll actually come right through the chain or that other slip knot. Okay, so there you go. So that's one. So we want to pull through and we want to rotate and pull through. Just like so. Back and underneath. So you want to rotate this hook as you're going along. So if you don't rotate it enough, even though you have it, it will jam and if it's not rotated at all you will drop it so you want to rotate it so it's nice on under and there's actually friction coming from your fingers you can actually see that this finger is actually moving just because I've been doing it for 23 years but you can see it's kind of pulling it there and you're gonna see that I'm gonna pull back because I want the tension to still stay but if I don't move my fingers this will get really loose so I want to pull back just like so So some people when they teach they actually tell you to get your finger to stay straight. You don't have to keep it straight. You will find that you will trust that when it's coming from your pinky area back here that it will stay in the same spot when it's coming from your hand. In actual fact a long term crochet you could actually get a little bit of fabric burn right on the tip of your finger depending on how dry your hands are. So you just want to uh, chain as long as you want to and usually in the patterns it tells you how many to chain. So we should review one more thing before we call session number two or lesson number two quits for today. I'm now going to do a slip knot in real time and I wanted to show you something one more thing before we finish off these lessons for today. What I wanted to tell you here this is a slip knot that is now on your hook this never counts as one in a project so if you were asked for ten uh, chains going across this is never one this is actually considered zero. So what we want to just do is that it's now considered one, two, three, four, five. So when we look back here, the actual slip knot is actually part of the first one here. So a lot of people make the mistake and count the slip knot as one, but in actual fact you're actually going to be running out of uh, chains at the end because it's actually combined into the first one and not a separate entity altogether. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and this was lesson number two and you're going to notice in the lessons ahead that it's more practical than it is theory so i've taught you how to sit properly so that you're not hurting yourself where to put your yarn balls also i've taught you a little bit about gauge and how to read your yarn label but in the lessons ahead we're going to get right into the heavy duty crochet aspect so grab your crochet hooks and some yarn that you love and follow along in lesson number three we're going to review single crochet so i'm going to teach you how to do that we're also going to look back and learn how to chain once again, hold your material, create your slip knot, and so that you begin to single crochet. So once you understand single crochet, you can actually start making projects already because as we progress, you're going to find yourself getting more and more knowledgeable about crochet. Until next time, I'll see you on lesson number three. And on behalf of Curtsy Crochet Hooks, I'm your host, 